Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, today we're going to get back on the F7 and uh, just we're going to do a few little repair jobs and uh, continue with some assembly. And I'm going to talk about some uh, uh, rubber grommets and the kind you can't get and something that'll work and that sort of thing. So let me get you overhead here and the first thing we're going to do is uh, repair an air cleaner. Okay, this had just completely come apart and of course it had mice in it and all kinds of stuff. So I, I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner to clean it up and I really didn't want to take away the old material too much uh, because it shows where it needs to go. So I've just kind of got the worst of it out of there and I'm going to just do what they did. It looks like they used caulking. And this is a this is a clear for countertops and tubs that sort of stuff, and the thing comes all the way up to the front of this piece, so we want to lay a bead in there. Oops, what in the world, <laughs> getting hung up here. All right, this is a clear, but it starts out white. I can just kind of follow the line here where it was and put it on pretty pretty heavy. And all he did, this like I say, this cage, this area right here pulls all the way up to the front. Okay, I guess I kind of put that stuff in the wrong place. Maybe I can just push it up there. Let's see. This right here needed to come up here. Yeah, something like that, I think. Okay, yeah, that should be right. So that fits down in there and then it just pulls right up against the front of this uh, tube. And looks like maybe I didn't get all that in the place I needed to get it. So let's go around here and, and shoot it in there where we need it. Trim it up a little bit. The idea there is just to just to hold the the mesh in there, I believe. Okay, that looks about right. And this does uh, dry clear. I really don't know whether we need to mess too much with this. Try to push it into the mesh a little bit. Maybe that'll help hold it. Yeah, okay. And I'm just going to let this side dry and then we'll do the exact same thing with this side and 
once we're done, we can use a uh, universal uni filter. This is the BF1. It comes in a 12 by 16 by 5, 5 8 thick foam. And you just, uh, you glue it with, uh, uh, I usually use the, uh, Blue RTV. And you just glue it around just, uh, just to the front. Actually, no, you don't. That's when you hook one together. That's this one here is a one you want to be able to pull it off. So it's going to have to be uh, it's cut wider and it fits into this uh, this groove right here all the way around. So that's how that one will have to be made. The last one I did was a TS250, I think, and it uh, requires you to, to glue it. And if you're gluing it, the RTV works very good. Okay, so we'll let this dry and we'll do the other side probably off camera. Okay, back over here at the lift. And what I'm gonna do today is put all the black parts on and I'll probably just start at the front and work my way back. And a couple things I wanted to go over. Uh, one of them is the, is the horn. Uh, this one, all I did was clean it up a little bit and it actually does work. The only thing that was really bad was these uh, uh, grommets were completely, they were so hard they just broke and they're not available from Kawasaki. And when I looked them up in the parts list, they don't even show them separate. You have to buy a horn to get them. Uh, so I don't know, but I'll tell you what I did. These are brand new ones and they use the, the original center pieces out of the old ones. And these are actually from the Harbor Freight Grommet Assortment. I use these from time to time. Actually, those were these, which are what they call 7 16 um, There's all the dimensions on them. But those you can just push in there and the original uh, center fits right in there. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the... Let me see if I can get you a little closer. The ones that go right in here. These are not available from Kawasaki. And I think if you remember right, the last time that I was uh, working on this bike and I was kind of putting things together, I said, well, I think a Yamaha one's pretty close. And it is. And that's what I put in there. Uh, let me show you what, what I've got. Okay, these. Now, I don't think you can get these from... Yamaha anymore, but you can get them from the aftermarket and the number on them is uh, right there and if you look on eBay Moto Dad uh, Look up him and he you can buy a package of them with the centers too for I, I can't even I can't remember I've had these for a while but I think it's a pack of 10 and you know, it's probably like 10 bucks or something like that. It's not very bad, but they, they fit right in there. They are just a little bit wide. So when you're, when you're pushing the air cleaner in, you're just going to have to kind of squeeze these tabs just a little bit, but it will go in there. And if you really wanted to, you could trim them with a razor blade a little bit. But believe me, they fit right in there. So there's no point in doing that. Uh, now what else was there? There's, uh, I think, well I'm still waiting on the, let's see, the ones that go on this bracket. The ones that go here, I believe that, yeah, those and these, I think I'm still waiting on. Supposedly you can get them and they're on order. 
uh, Rocky Mountain hadn't, hadn't said that they couldn't get them yet. And they, I ordered those when I ordered the ones here. And they've already called me and said these weren't available. So uh, I, as far as I know, the other two will show up, probably another week or so. They're usually pretty good about it. And, you know, the thing I like about uh, Rocky Mountain is uh, they've got free shipping at 75 bucks, and uh, Partzilla is 150 or 149 something like that. <clears throat> yeah, you get a little better price from Partzilla, but this stuff, they ship what they have right now. It shows up, and then when the other stuff comes in, that follows. You don't have to wait on everything to come in before you get anything and have to wait to, you know, obviously it doesn't take a lot to uh, add up to $150, but a lot of times I get stuff, uh, I just need a few things like this, and they go ahead and ship me what they have, and I can get started on things, and when, it, when the rest of it comes in, then they just ship that out. And it's free shipping too, as long as you're at 75, I think. So let me, uh, let me get ready here. And I, I think I'm just going to start up at the front and uh, work my way back. Okay, I just I went ahead and put this uh, little flimsy. This is really not a bracket. The bracket is under there. This is just kind of a for show thing on the fender. But those two pieces, the actual bracket and this, uh, uh, this bracket here, I've already mounted up there. It's just loose. I just wanted to make sure everything went in there. And I've got a, uh, uh, a cable tie here also. And it's just loose. So, it, you know, that stuff is, uh, if you have followed me at all, you know I like to get that kind of stuff on the bike because it uh, is less likely to get damaged. And that one was a whole lot of screws. So I didn't want to have to uh, bore you with all that. So let me see here if I can get the headlight bucket up. And this was missing when I got this. And I believe this is the correct one. It seems to fit about right. And I got, I got everything that goes in it, so, or I think I do. It came with a bulb and the ring and everything, so that one's uh, in pretty nice shape. There was, uh, these were all bent, and you know, at first I thought these two holes were something somebody drilled in there, but I've looked at a couple others on eBay and they have them too. So I'm not sure what goes in those. Not even sure what goes in that one, you know, just, if anybody knows, let me know if they would. Okay, so we, I'm just kind of going to put that stuff on loosely. And we'll get up here now to the, to our horn, the one I just talked about. That, this cleaned up pretty good just with uh, some steel wool. It just had a little corrosion on it. The major part that was uh, damaged was uh, the grommets. And I have used those little, that grommet set from Harbor Freight so many times, it just, uh, you know, sometimes you need something and they're not making it anymore. So you have to, you have to overcome and make do. And I've got the, uh, the coil here, and if you were watching when I took it apart, it was split right here, and I packed uh, JB Weld up inside there, and I went through here and uh, re-insulated uh, these terminals. So this thing should be good. It's got a great connector on it. I think everything else is in good shape. I just put the uh, uh, 
the electrical uh, compound on this after I cleaned it up to keep it from rusting. I think I've talked about that before. This, since this was running, we know that this was working. And I think probably the only issue is that it, it had that little crack in it, which, you know, if you've got water or something, then uh, you'd be getting that inside of it. So I think as long as we get that sealed up, all right, having trouble here. then I think we're probably all right. Then we just can drop our air box down here. You see, I have to squeeze it just a little bit. It's not perfect. And I'm going to start with my... Now this one up on top here, you can get those. It's, a, it's the standard uh, flatter type. Okay, so this is uh, kind of the top view of it here. And now we'll start on the toolbox just under it. And these, as far as I can tell, don't have any um, grommets. But this, this one bolt is kind of tough to get in. And that other one is just right here. Just straight down on that one. Okay, I've already kind of assembled the uh, battery box. I've stuck the CDI box in there and the rectifier. They're kind of where they're supposed to be. And we'll just, uh, I know it's not gold, guys, but I didn't have any gold paint. It's close enough for me. So now we'll go ahead and stick that up where it belongs.
So, and I rewired the uh, rectifier. The wires, uh, one of the ends was broke off and the other one was uh, pretty bad, the terminals. So I just went ahead and, and unsoldered them here and put another new piece of uh, shrink wrap on them. It tested good, so that's why I'm, I'm just uh, putting new wires on it and we'll go from there. I've got the inner fender here. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in position. We've got our chain guard. So we can get that in here. It's kind of slides in right here. Uh, a lot of them are built that way. Uh, Yamaha's are the same way. They just uh, kind of slide in to this little piece there. I'm not sure you can see it. it's all black in there. But yeah, it just hooks under there, slides forward. until you line the two screw holes up. And then you can put those in. And Bob's your uncle. And we got a kick stand here. This is one of the ones I had to find a bolt for. It's uh, it's not a big deal that it's 14 or a uh, 10 millimeter with, but it's a JIS with a 14 head on it, so it makes it a little more difficult. My local hardware store had the ones with a 17 millimeter Okay, that's good and tight. And let's see here. Like that. I think it's about the same either way. Okay, leave that down while we get the chain guard on, or guide, guide, I think, yeah. And that was another thing I needed a bolt for. Again, we were talking the, uh, the JIS head. And not only that, but it's also, both of these were uh, 1.25 millimeter threads instead of uh, what normally would be probably a 150. Okay, the next thing, uh, if you remember right, I was messing around with the other uh, buddy pegs, and these, uh, it didn't have the, the groove to keep it from turning. Let me go get the other one. If you remember right, see it has this uh, slot right here or a half slot, whatever you want to call it. And it's, it should have one that uh, mirrors it here so that when you tighten it up, it, it can't move. And there's, it's not there, so I don't think those were even made for this. So I went to a lot of trouble to 
to plate them and everything, uh, my idea was to get these and take the rubber off of them and put on those. But I think I'll just go ahead and use these. But the one thing that I noticed was the uh, bolt is a little bit long. So I spun up a couple of uh, spacers and painted them black to go along with the frame just so uh, everything would, uh, would fit the right way and you don't have a bunch of threads hanging out the back. And you just kind of turn that and we'll tighten it on up at the end. So you can see our spacer here now. I just tried to get it pretty close to this original diameter of this one so that it, uh, these are kind of loose, but if you allow them to set here without being extended, they will kind of come back. I'm, I'm hoping that they do because this is going to be rattly, you know, going to be terrible. Uh, I left them overnight and in the, uh, in this position and they do, they, uh, they kind of come back. But if they didn't, that would be just a, a big rattle thing going on all the time. And of course we've got uh, this one here that we need to tighten up and see if I can get back there to get this one. Maybe I can get it from down here. Yeah, it's easier. Okay. Okay, let's get our brake hooked up. We'll grease this. piece it goes into here. And that's, let's see here, where's that? There, like that, a little extra. And then we've got a washer. I had to come up with that too. This is not the exact thing, but it's, it'll do the trick. That's the main thing. And try to get our cotter pin in there. We'll turn that over. And we've got another one up here at the uh, at the rod. Get a little washer that goes in it and a cotter pin there also and I'll get those turned over and for the other uh, buddy peg there see this one I left this way so it's it's tight right now it just get, takes a little time for the rubber to expand back out here's the spacer I made for this side so that one will just go in there and then uh, nut goes on the other side of it. These were just uh, ones listed for this bike and I think maybe a, a uh, F7 or F, I'm sorry, F5 uh, or 9 also and probably the, the 250. What is that, the F8, I think it is. Okay, so I'll get those cotter pins turned over. And we've got our bulb and ring here. And of course all this will have to come back off.
Let's get the other one in on the other side. And we've got our reflectors we can get on there. So, looking a little more complete. Okay, so I've got, as far as I know, just the instrument bracket and the ignition switch bracket. Um, they'll go in there. I've got to do some rewiring. I'm still waiting on the uh, the grommets for these and here. And I'm not sure what all I've got to do to the instruments yet. I don't think a whole lot. I think those are in pretty good shape. Probably have to do some wiring or, or some uh, putting new uh, sleeving on. So I think that's about as far as I can go today. I've got, uh, I've got to do some more plating. I've got to plate the uh, pins that go in for the seat. And I think there's a couple of uh, bolts for up at the instrument cluster. There's like a half dozen things that I've missed. And I'm sure I'll miss something else. Okay, let's just take a, another look at it here. The guard, the guide, the kickstand, the spring, the horn, the coil. All of the parts in here, the air cleaner box, the tool kit the uh, battery box that we repaired and the CDI unit goes in that. We got the inner fender back in place and the brake on and that seems to be about right I think. Uh, we'll see that it was pretty bent. We'll see how this uh, pedal lines up when we're when we have the engine back in, I may have to do something there. Of course, I've got the little chains that go here and on the uh, shifter. That was to keep the grass from getting between them. You know, that was a big trick in the day. And we've got the headlight up with the new bulb, or the bulb and the uh, uh, trim ring. And we've got the bracketry up here for the uh, fender. And that fender is cracked, so I think it's cracked in where the one of the well or one of the bolts go. So that'll have to be uh, welded and of course painted and all that stuff. I I just I'm not real sure what I want to do on the paint. Uh, you know, I I've had a lot of people say you ought to keep it the way it is, but I don't know. You know, it's six one half dozen the other. Uh, I've got the decals for it, so why not take the dents and all that stuff out and uh, make it really look nice? You know, I've, I've been in the car business for years, and I've heard the, uh, you know, all these people say it's, it's only original once, and, and the value of the paint uh, for an original paint job is more so than a refurbished one. That is only, uh, it's up to the buyer whether it is or not. And a lot of people want, want them looking good and brand new and other people want the survivor thing. So it's up to the individual in my opinion. And we're back down on the ground. And like I say, these uh, tapered cushions that go in here, I'm waiting on and the ones for the instrument. So that will all fit in there like that. And of course the switch. Okay, let's go back up and see if our air cleaner is set up so we can finish the job. Okay, looks like that's set up pretty nice. So we need to, again, the, this comes right up to the front of this one. So you can kind of see where it, what it needs to have. There's still, some of it's still kind of wet. 
But I'll go ahead and get the sealant on and see if I can get it to uh, get in position. Okay, so we'll let that set up. Okay, guys, there you have it. Every, most of what I can, the, the black parts, I guess you want to call it, uh, those are all on, and we've just got a couple exceptions, and we've, uh, we're in the process of repairing our air cleaner, and when I get ready to uh, uh, put the foam on it, I'll show that to you so you'll, you can see how that's done. And... Uh, you know, I, it's just, it's a good feeling when parts are going back on the bike, even though we've got the whole engine yet to do and all the, the painted parts and all that. There's still plenty to do, all the wiring. That wiring is going to be a mess. So stand by to watch me get flustered fixing that. Uh, electrical just is not my, my favorite thing, uh, but it's got to be done. So stand by for that, and we'll get into rewiring the, uh, uh, the switches and the controls and all that stuff and the wiring harness, and uh, we'll just see where it goes from there. But we've got a few more parts on the bike, and it's a good feeling. So hey, thanks for going along on the ride, and we'll see you next video.